A medium force focused on intra-theater mobility and delivering massed infantry forces with decent fire support, the Stryker infantry are perhaps the least understood compared to their light and mechanized counterparts. In this video, we're going to dive into the current organization of the U.S. Army's Stryker Brigade combat teams, with a focus on the infantry rifle company, the attached support available to it, how they're used, and their limitations. I'm your host Brendan, and this is Battle Order. First, I'd just like to thank our Patreon supporters who allow us to cover more interesting but less popular topics. If you want to help Battle Order grow and get a bunch of perks, including early access to videos, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash battle order. Also, make sure to join our Discord server linked in the description where we talk about stuff. But onto the topic at hand. The Striker Brigade Combat Team, or SBCT, is one of three types of BCTs, the basic deployable maneuver unit of the U.S. Army. The brigade fights primarily as dismounted infantry with combined arm support. Striker infantry are organically motorized by 8x8 Striker infantry carriers, offering superior mounted mobility and firepower when compared to lighter infantry BCTs, but a lighter logistical burden and greater deployability when compared to the heavy armored brigade combat teams. With approximately 42 to 4300 soldiers in the brigade, the Striker Brigade combat team consists of the following. A headquarters and headquarters company with a colonel in command of the brigade. Three Striker infantry battalions, each under a lieutenant colonel. A cavalry squadron providing reconnaissance and fire support. A field artillery battalion with three batteries of towed 155mm howitzers for a total of 18 howitzers in the brigade. A brigade engineering battalion, or BEB, with combat engineers, signals, and intelligence support. And a brigade support battalion, or BSB, providing centralized distribution, medical, and maintenance services, as well as forward support companies attached directly to combat and combat support units in the brigade. The maneuver components of the brigade are its infantry battalions. Each battalion has a headquarters and headquarters company, or HHC, and three rifle companies. Rifle companies are the close combat elements of the infantry battalion, consisting of a headquarters section, three rifle platoons, and a a mortar section, in addition to habitual attachments. Starting from the top, the company comes under the command of a captain, assisted by an executive officer ranking first lieutenant, who coordinates sustainment for the company. Both officers ride in their own striker ICV, further crewed by a vehicle commander, driver, and radio telephone operator, or RTO. The commander also gets a Humvee, driven by their RTO when the striker isn't needed, such as in Garrison. The HQ also has two five-ton cargo trucks towing water trailers. One carries the company first sergeant, the senior enlisted soldier in the company, a Ford Signal Support NCO, and a senior combat medic attached from the battalion combat medic section. The other truck carries a supply sergeant and supply specialist. In addition to these assets, the company will also have a number of attached personnel. First, on deployment, the HQ receives a fire support team, or FIST, mounted in a fire support vehicle from the Field Artillery Battalion. They aid in the coordination of fire support for the company, including brigade artillery, mortars, naval gunfire, and close air support. The FIST is authorized a fire support officer, or FSO, a fire support sergeant, fire support specialist, and an RTO. The company trains will also have a medical evacuation vehicle and a medical evacuation squad attached from the battalion medical treatment platoon. It's manned by an emergency care sergeant, a trauma specialist, and a driver. Moving on, providing the company with organic indirect fire support is the mortar section, with two M1129 mortar carriers. Each is equipped with a 120mm mortar for mounted fire, as well as a spare 60mm mortar for dismounted operations. The section comes under the leadership of a staff sergeant section leader riding in one carrier, while a sergeant squad leader rides in the other. Each carrier is further crewed by a driver, gunner, assistant gunner, and ammo bearer. And now onto the meat of the company, each rifle platoon consists of a platoon HQ, three rifle squads, and one weapon squad. In the platoon HQ, the platoon comes under the overall leadership of a first or second lieutenant, assisted by a platoon sergeant ranking sergeant first class. The platoon leader, or PL, has an RTO, providing them with personal dismounted communications. A combat medic will also be attached to the platoon HQ from the battalion combat medic section. 
Further, a Ford Observer and newly added Ford Observer RTO are attached from the Field Artillery Battalion to provide the platoon with fire support coordination capabilities. Other personnel, such as interpreters, may also be attached depending on the need. Meanwhile, each rifle squad consists of nine dismounted personnel and two vehicle crew members. In Army doctrine, the rifle squad is the smallest unit that can independently fire a maneuver, with one team acting as a base of fire while another conducts the assault. It comes under the purview of a squad leader, officially a staff sergeant but often a sergeant in practice, who is armed with an M4A1 carbine. The dismounted element then has an alpha team and a bravo team, identically organized. They're both led by a team leader, ranking sergeant officially, but often a senior specialist, who is also armed with a carbine. Each team further consists of an automatic rifleman with an M249 light machine gun, a grenadier armed with a carbine and an M320 40mm grenade grenade launcher, and a rifleman armed with a carbine and an AT-4 disposable anti-tank weapon. Each rifle squad also has a Javelin anti-tank guided missile system available to them with a number of reloads stowed in the left side of the striker's passenger compartment. The Javelin is the rifle company's main anti-tank weapon and is typically employed by dismounted infantry. Meanwhile, the vehicle team consists of a sergeant vehicle commander and a junior enlisted driver. The former mans the striker's remote weapon system, identifies targets, and directs the driver. We've been told that in some units, vehicle crews are centralized under a single vehicle squad under the purview of a senior vehicle commander to coordinate maintenance. However, this is probably less tactically relevant in combat. The weapon squad, meanwhile, is the platoon's dismounted base of fire. It consists of a squad leader, usually a senior squad leader in the platoon, two M240L medium machine gun teams with a gunner carrying a pistol as a sidearm, and an assistant gunner each. The squad is then rounded out by the vehicle team. Doctrinally, the gunner should outrank the assistant gunner, but in practice, the assistant gunner is usually senior and directs the gunner's fire. Some units may operate as three-man teams with an additional ammo bearer or a specific team leader, but this is not the case in every unit. Unlike a light infantry weapon squad, there are no dedicated anti-tank teams as rifle squads man those systems when necessary. The vehicle the platoon rides in is the M1126 Striker ICV. Currently, most are armed with either an M250 Cal heavy machine gun or a Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher on a remote weapon system. However, in the future, the Army intends to equip each rifle platoon with two Striker Dragoons armed with a 30mm autocannon, as well as one with the M2 Browning and one with the Mark 19. Because the turret on the Dragoon is remote, mounted over the passenger compartment with with no internal turret basket, the passenger capacity isn't diminished. Although armed with an auto cannon, the Striker Dragoon is not intended to be a wheeled equivalent to the Bradley. There's a reason why the Striker is referred to colloquially as a truck by the infantry. The auto cannon does, however, give the Striker unit more options during chance contact with mechanized forces, particularly when facing light armored vehicles such as the BMP or BTR, where the 50 cal alone would be an unreliable counter. The four strikers are divided into two sections of two vehicles each. Section A comes under the command of the platoon leader, while Section B comes under the command of the platoon sergeant. The strikers without leadership act as wingmen to the leaders. When a leader dismounts, a senior vehicle commander takes over command of the section. As for seating, there isn't a specific doctrine for who sits where, so it's all unit dependent. Each vehicle has a vehicle commander station, driver station, nine passenger seats, and less of a seat but more of just a space behind the driver that an extra person could sit in. It's possible to squeeze in more passengers, but given units are usually under strength, space is not usually an issue. Each vehicle has a vehicle commander and a driver at their respective stations. Usually, the platoon the leader will man the squad leader station in one of the rifle squad vehicles, accompanied by their RTO. The platoon sergeant, meanwhile, will do the same accompanied by the combat medic because the platoon sergeant coordinates casualty evacuation. In vehicles with leadership, the squad leader mans the back right air guard hatch, acting as additional security. In vehicles without platoon leadership, the squad leader mans the squad leader's hatch, while a team leader occupies the back right air guard hatch instead. The back left air guard hatch, meanwhile, is manned by a junior soldier. In the weapon squad vehicle, this is often a machine gunner. The remainder of the seat 
sheets are then filled out by the rest of the squads. In the scope of company operations, some of the normal rifle company personnel may be tasked to perform other specific duties. For example, each rifle company is authorized a Raven unmanned aerial vehicle manned by trained personnel to extend the company's reconnaissance capacity. In the newest manuals, there's now the intention to equip the Striker Company with two Group 2 UAVs such as the Scan Eagle. Meanwhile, there seems to be the intention to push Group 1 UAVs, which could include systems like the Raven and smaller UAVs. UAVs down to the platoon level. In addition to UAVs, the Army plans to train infantry and maneuver units as Stinger Manpads operators. This is part of a new push to increase maneuver unit air defense capacity with a refocus on pure conflict. This means two soldiers in the rifle company would be designated as a Stinger team in the future. Outside of the rifle company, there are several ways battalion and brigade attachments can augment the company's fighting power. One is the Brigade Cavalry Squadron's Weapons Troop, consisting of a headquarters section with a Striker ICV, three ATGM carrier platoons of three vehicles each, and three Striker MGS platoons with four vehicles each. There are a number of ways that the weapons troop can be employed. When split up and attached in support of maneuver units, individual platoons provide direct fire support to the infantry battalion and or rifle company. The exact task organization will depend on the mission, but Doctrine for Habitual Attachment has each infantry battalion share one of each type platoon with the Brigade Cavalry Troops. For the infantry battalions, attachments could take the form of pure platoons or mixed platoons with both MGS and ATGM carriers. The ATGM carrier provides infantry with a long-range anti-tank capability with its 12 tow missiles, two at the ready. The Striker MGS meanwhile is an assault gun, focused primarily at engaging structures, fortifications, emplacement, and personnel. It has a limited self-defense capability against tanks with its heat and AP FSDS rounds, which with its 105 mm would be effective against less than modern tanks. While ammo load likely varies mission to mission, the standard ammo load for the MGS's main gun is four rounds of high explosive anti-tank, two rounds of armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding Sabo, 10 rounds of high explosive plastic, which is the American version of Hesh intended primarily for anti-structure work, and two rounds of canister shot for work against personnel in the open or behind light cover. Other force multipliers available to the infantry include combat engineers attached from the BEB. This may include a mobility squad mounted in an M1132 engineer support vehicle. This unit provides obstacle clearing, lane marking, mine detection, mine rolling, and mine clearing line charge services to maneuver elements. Depending on the mission, other engineering units may be earmarked to support rifle companies. Meanwhile, from battalion, sniper teams may be attached to rifle companies to provide longer range precision fires. Each battalion has a squad of three sniper teams of three men each. These teams may employ a number of different weapon systems, including anti-materiel rifles such as the M10750 Cal, sniper rifles like the M24 bolt action rifle, and marksman rifles like the M110 or a new M110A1. Other members of the team may be armed with car Beans, one possibly with an M320 grenade launcher, and act as a spotter and security. In terms of use, the Striker infantry provide a number of advantages over light and mechanized infantry, but also have a number of limitations. For example, because Striker infantry are organically motorized, they're capable of faster and more independent moves than the light infantry with better protection and firepower. An example of the Striker unit's intra-theater mobility was an exercise at the Sugart Gordon Urban Warfare Training Facility, where Striker infantry were able to arrive on objectives 12 hours before an equivalent light infantry unit typically would have, which caught the enemy off balance. The army now motorizes its light infantry with MRAPs on deployment. However, at the time of the striker's adoption, the mobility solution for light infantry was the Humvee. But in either case, the striker is able to ferry an entire infantry squad and more equipment in a single vehicle. Further, motorization in IBCTs is external support. Strikers with their organic vehicle crews 
and fewer vehicles per rifle company, did not suffer as much by leaving soldiers behind to provide security after dismount. Striker units are still not as strategically mobile as light infantry, meaning an infantry brigade combat team, such as the 173rd or one of the 82nd Airborne's brigades, is capable of being delivered to a crisis quicker. However, striker units are still superior in this respect to armored brigade combat teams, and have a potential use as a middle ground unit that can be deployed faster than the armored forces and with greater firepower and protection than the light infantry. The Striker unit's major advantage over heavier forces is its lighter logistical burden, allowing them to be more flexible and reducing the time it takes to prepare for movement over distance. It also helps during dispersed operations, which Striker units leverage during counterinsurgency operations in Iraq. And if rapidly deployed, Striker units don't have to wait as long for logistical support to be delivered, meaning they'd theoretically be able to act sooner. At the same time, Strikers have clear limitations when compared to the ABCTs, those being protection, armament, and cross-country mobility. Unlike Bradley's, the striker cannot reliably fight through to the objective, at least not when facing a peer foe with heavy weapons, and they're not reliable tank killers without dismounted support. Strikers have to use terrain to stay out of range or sight of enemy anti-tank systems until the infantry assault. Strikers without force multipliers are generally predicted to perform poorly against a mechanized enemy in a prepared position if employed like Bradley's are. However, the striker is not intended for the Bradley mission set and poor performance under that condition is predictable. The striker has an advantage over the Bradley, and that is its focus on the infantry. Depending on the unit and situation, Bradley's can often be employed as light tanks essentially, with comparatively small complements of infantry who may or may not stay mounted much of the time depending on leadership preference. All else equal, striker units are superior superior for mission sets where massed infantry is key, including the defense and movement through restricted terrain or urban environments. Thus, the Striker, even the Striker Dragoon, shouldn't be considered a worse Bradley on wheels, and the Striker MGS shouldn't be thought of as a tank stand-in. These medium units provide the US Army with a particular capability that, when employed appropriately, can be superior to the behemoths with big sticks. If you like this look at striker units, check out this video where we take a similar look at the Russian Motorized Rifle Company, a near-peer equivalent to the striker infantry. I'll see you over there.